is the degree to which the transformer-based models can be applied to sort of the full set of areas that you'd need for AGI. And if you look at the human brain, for example, you do have reasonably specialized systems or all neural networks, be specialized systems for the visual cortex versus, you know, um, areas of higher thought, areas for empathy or other sort of aspects of everything from personality to processing. Do you think that the transformer architectures are the main thing that will just keep going and get us there? Or do you think we'll need other architectures over time? So I have to, I understand precisely what you're saying. And I have two answers to this question. The first is that in my opinion, the best way to think about the question of architecture is not in terms of a binary, is it enough? But how much effort, how much, what will be the cost of using this particular architecture? Like at this point, I don't think anyone doubts that the transformer architecture can do amazing things, but maybe something else, maybe some modification could have some compute efficiency benefits. So we also better to think about it in terms of compute efficiency rather than in terms of, can it get there at all? I think at this point, the answer is obviously yes. To the question about, well, what about the human brain and with, with its brain regions? I actually think that the situation there is subtle and deceptive for the following reasons. So what I believe you alluded to is the fact that the human brain has known regions. It has like, it has a speech perception region. It has a speech production region. It has an image region. It has a face region. It's like all these regions. And it looks like it's specialized. But you know what's interesting? Sometimes... There are cases where very young children have severe cases of epilepsy at a young age. And the only way they figured out how to treat such children is by removing half of their brain. Because it happened at such a young age, these children grow up to be pretty functional adults. And they have all the same brain regions, but they are somehow compressed onto one hemisphere. So maybe some, you know, information processing efficiency is lost. It's a very traumatic thing to experience, but somehow all these brain regions rearrange themselves. There is another experiment where that which was done maybe 30 or 40 years ago on ferrets. So the ferret is a small animal. It's a pretty mean experiment. They took the optic nerve of the ferret, which comes from its eye and attached it to its auditory cortex. So now the inputs from the eye starts to map to the speech processing area of the brain. And then they recorded different neurons after it had a few days of learning to see, and they found neurons in the auditory cortex, which were very similar to the visual cortex, or vice versa. It was either they mapped the eye to the ear, to the auditory cortex, or the ear to the visual cortex. But something like this has happened. These are fairly well-known ideas in AI that the cortex of humans and animals are extremely uniform. And so that further supports the AI. Like you just need one big uniform architecture. That's all you need. Yeah, in general, it seems like every biological system is reasonably lazy in terms of taking one system and then reproducing it and then reusing it in different ways. And that's true of everything from DNA encoding. You know, there's 20 amino acids and protein sequences. And so everything is made out of the same 20 amino acids on through to, uh, to your point, sort of how you think about tissue architecture. So it's remarkable that that carries over into the digital world as well, depending on the architecture you use. I mean, the way I see it is that this is an indication from a technological point of view, we are very much on the right track. 